Welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And, and we're cousins. cousins. And we hold our cups like this the entire all the time. time. <laughs> because we're awkward. Hi. <laughs> I tried to make it more natural this time. Did it work? I, just a little bit? You sounded natural. I was just sitting around. <laughs> but I was still doing this. <laughs> so maybe I sounded natural, but I didn't look it. <laughs> okay. Um, today we are going to deep dive into Fable by Adrian Young. Yay. I know we've been talking about this for so long mm. and it's finally here. I'm so excited. I know. So am I. Um, so spoiler warning, this episode can contains major spoilers for Fable. So we're going to be talking all about it. Yes. So if you haven't read it, go read it before you listen to the rest of this. Yes, please. Um, links are in the description of where you can buy it or you can go check it out at your local library. Yes. Get your link out of here. <laughs> okay. So what tea are we drinking? We're drinking strawberry sweetheart from tea cellar. So cute. It is a green tea. Um, I clicked on the link already. I have it open. Wow. Okay. It says it's a captivating composition of strawberry and vanilla that is sure to warm your world. Um, I think it's really good though. No, like, I do too. I love green tea and yes. I love flavored green tea. When I don't mind this flavor at all. Mm -hmm. Like I could drink a lot of this tea. It smells so yes, good. It does. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, well, All what right. are you reading? Um, so I finished Crush, <gasps> or I'm almost finished with Crush by Tracy Wolf. I'm kind of like, like, like slowly reading it so yeah. that when Covet comes out, I can just read the next one. Oh my god, did you see they're already talking about the fourth book? Which I didn't yeah. know there's gonna be a fourth one. I didn't either. Yeah, <sighs> I know. I'm addicted. So it's really good if you guys like paranormal. If you like being, um, it's kind of like Twilight. I would say in a way of like. There's romance and it's but also paranormal. It's at a school, right? Yeah, it's at a boarding school, and there's so a like, bunch of different like witches and uh, werewolves and like all these magical things. And right now, what I really like that kind of reminds me of like Harry Potter is that they have like tournaments. Mm -hmm. oh, only, my God, that's yeah. My favorite thing. So only it's like um, for them, it's to get on the council, like the high council of like their like mm -hmm. existence. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so. That's what it was normally for, but now it's just, like, a school because they don't do that anymore until, like, there's an opening on the council. So now they just do it as, like, a fun, like, sport, and, like, the winners get, like, um, every year they just get, like, a trophy or, like, you know, bragging rights. But um, this year there's, like, a stone that they could win. Ooh. Yeah. So it's really, really interesting. The cover, they just announced the cover for Court, which was <gasps> number four. Ooh, that looks it's so, so cool. I love all the covers on this series. So do I. I haven't started reading it yet because reasons because <laughs> life yeah but right. <laughs> yeah i really like it i'm excited for covet when does covet come out is it da, 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 i'm blanking it's this year um hold on because court comes out in september so yeah covet is march 2nd oh my goodness yeah that's really so, soon <laughs> i know so i've been like slowly like trying to like read it so that when it comes out because i pre-ordered that i could just continue on right um and then i listened to of wicked but blood by olivia wildenstein and katie hayo hayoys mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh that was a new release for february and it guys it is so good like i can't tell you how much I didn't know that I needed like a new fantasy world yeah. in my life. Yeah. And I convinced you to. Yes, get I it. have it. <laughs> I just have to start it because I have yeah. so many other books to read right now. So it is based in um, Rome and it's um, it's like it's kind of like a magical boarding school, but it's a magical like college. And basically this town um, is the place where magic was created, Ooh. but cre magic went away and now they're trying to like, um, they accidentally start bringing it back by the four families that um, originated there. And it's really interesting. Um, there's ghosts, there's curses, there's- um, Did you say this is another magic school? Yeah. Oh my God. Only it's college. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's like rituals and there's monsters and it's so interesting. And you don't like know who's good and who's bad and who knows what. And it's, I, I'm addicted. I cannot wait for the second one to come out. Oh um, it's the Quatrefoil Chronicles. And the Quatrefoil, Ooh. and it because like there's a bunch of lore behind it, but a Quatrefoil is like um, kind of like a four leaf clover ish looking thing. You can look it up, um, and yeah, that's basically the four pieces that they have to find to bring back magic. But there's like a lot of like curses along the way, and it's so good. Yeah, the next one is of Tainted Heart, and it's expected in 2020. 
two. So I was like, wait a minute, that 2022. was last year. 2022. <gasps> yeah, okay. I'm really excited to read the oh next goodness. one. So do you know how many books are supposed to be? I don't know. They kind She's only, like, said book two, but I definitely think there's going to be, like, it's a series. I think that there's going to be more. Because what I really liked about it is the first one didn't lead you on... You know what I mean? Like, it's, like it's well-timed. Like, you're not like, oh, my gosh, there's four pieces. It's going to take four books. Like, no. Oh, It's okay. very quick-paced, but you can tell that there's going to be a lot more to come. Mm-hmm. It sounds so, oh. it's so interesting. I can't so, wait to read it. Yes. What are you reading? Um, so I just started today. Um, it's called All Systems Red by Martha Wells. It's a uh, sci-fi, and it's a novella. So it's... Um, like a really quick read, Ooh. but there are, let's see how many, cause it's the murder bot diaries. It's a whole series. Um, and tour, tour publishing does mm-hmm. a lot of these novellas, but let's see, there are currently six books in the series, Dang. but they're all novellas. So they're all like quick little reads. Um, and I just started it today. I'm only one, uh, chapter in, but it's about this. It's a bot, like it's a robot, um, that was hired to basically protect this group of scientists that are on another planet and they're like, you know, going out and trying to get samples of soil and learning about this planet. And this robot was hired to protect the humans basically. Mm -hmm. Um, But the robot is awkward (laughs) and doesn't really like interacting with people. And it has figured out a way to break into um, like the media and so it can watch any shows that it wants. Oh and that's gosh, all it wants to do. Awesome. I mean, that's us. <laughs> right? That's all it wants to do is, like, sit and watch shows and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, so far, I'm in love. I love it. Oh, it sounds um, so cute. What yeah. made you, like, want to read this? So I've been hearing about it for a long time, but also I'm reading it as part of a book club for Instagram. Oh, cool. Uh, if you follow a couple reads on Instagram, um, her name is... I think it's pronounced Milana, mm-hmm. but she's been, she's doing this for 2021 where each month they're reading a different book for the book club. So you can join whichever month sounds good to you. And so February it's murder bot. March is going to be the profits. Um, and I've been reading every month with them. So it's been kind of fun to like so, get outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah that's because cool. each month is like completely different. Like January was reread tender as the flesh. Yeah. Which <laughs> nope, 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 is nope, not nope. for everyone. <laughs> not for me, man. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Oh, so far, I'm like, well, so before we read the book, um, she sent a link to the group so everyone could take uh, one of those quizzes to find out which character you are. Yeah. And I'm Murderbot. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yes. Yes, I am. That makes sense. <laughs> yes, I am mod- Murderbot. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So um, the Kindle mm-hmm. Unlimited pick recommendation actually is of Wicked Blood. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, by Olivia Wildenstein and Katie Hey, always. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I saw it on Kindle Unlimited. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's so cool. That is awesome. So Dang. go check that out. I think that's really cool. That it's already on there. So then you can enjoy it with us. Yeah. Um, so my prime reading rec this week is called When She Returned by Lucinda Berry. Uh, it will come as no surprise. This is a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's about this woman who she disappeared from a parking lot. Um, 11 years ago, she had a husband and a daughter and she's just been gone for 11 years. And then she shows back up at this gas station. Um, and it says she's clutching, clutching an infant and screaming for help. And everyone thinks that she was abducted as part of a cult. Oh gosh. So That's I was like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like just that initial thing pulled me right in. Cause yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so, Oh, that sounds good. I love anything that has to do with a cult. Or, like, unexplained disappearances. And, yeah, I thought it sounded really good. That does sound good. Yeah. So we have a new section, like a little new, I don't know what you want to call it, like a little topic for each week. Yeah, a new reading recommendation. Yes. For things that don't have to do with Amazon. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We're not sponsored by Amazon. We just want to, like, recommend all of the good books. Yeah. Um, So I want to recommend Lore by Alexander Bracken. This came out January 5th of this year. And I think... This would be a good read if you really like the Percy Jackson series, Um, (laughs) because it has to do with uh, Greek gods and stuff. Hmm. Um, So I'll read the synopsis for you guys. Every seven years, the Aegon begins. As punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals, hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines, all eager to kill a god and seize their divine power and immortality. 
Long ago, Laura Perseus fled that brutal world in the wake of her family's sadistic murder by a rival line, turning her back on the hunt's promises of eternal glory. For years, she's pushed away any thought of revenge against the man, now a god, responsible for their deaths. Yet, as the next hunt draws over New York City, two participants seek out her help. Castor, a childhood friend of Lore, believed long dead, and a gravely wounded Athena, among the last of the original gods. The goddess offers an alliance against their mutual enemy, and at last, a way for Lore to leave the Aegon behind forever. But Lore's decision to bind her fate to Athena's and rejoin the hunt will, become, will come at a deadly cost, and still may not be enough to stop the rise of a new god with the power to bring humanity to its knees." Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, so it's it's one of those worlds that there's there's a lot going on mm -hmm. and you know you you really kind of have to pay attention, but as you get going, it's just so interesting. And you know, if you've read Percy Jackson or you're familiar with the Greek gods at all, there's there's just so many characters you're going to recognize. Yeah. Oh. And it's just a one-off, it looks, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a good series, but dang, that's cool. But that, yeah, that's why I was drawn to it, because sometimes I just want a one-off. Like, yeah. I love series, but it's a time commitment. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> okay, um, announcements. Next week's episode is a tea chat. Um, so we're going to talk about all the good random things. Um and after that, we'll be talking about March new releases. So let us know what books you're excited for in March and we can talk about them. Yay. All right. Should we learn about Adrienne Young? Yes. Yeah, so Adrienne Young, um, she's a born and bred Texan turned to California girl. She's a foodie with a deep love of history and travel and a shameless addiction for coffee. When she's not writing, you can find her on her yoga mat, scouring antique fairs for old books, sipping wine over long dinners, or disappearing into her favorite art museums. She lives with her documentary filmmaker husband and their four little wildlings beneath the West Coast sun, which I just think is such a great <laughs> little bio. That is such a great bio. Um, she is also the author of Sky in the Deep and and the girl the sea gave back. Ooh. Okay, so we'll read the synopsis um, for Fable. For 17-year-old Fable, the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows, the sea is the only home she has ever known. It's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm. The next day, her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep, her, keep to herself learn to trust no one, and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her. The only thing that keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island, finding her father, and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew. To do so, Fable enlists the help of a young trader named West to get her off the island and across the Narrows to her father. But her father's rivalries and the dangers of his trading enterprise have only multiplied since she last saw him, and Fable fo soon finds out West isn't who he seems. Together, they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the Narrows if they're going to stay alive. All right. That tells so much, because we don't read the synopsis before we right. read the books. So I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> it really, it tells a lot about the story. Especially once you've read it, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So should we go through the characters? Yeah, but... This is where I want to say again, like, spoilers ahead. Yes. So if you've listened so far, basically... There's just going to be a lot of spoilers. Because even in our character descriptions, I think there's going to be a lot of spoilers. Yes. So go read the book and then come back and listen and learn about, like, our point of view on the yeah. book. All right. So characters. Um, Fable is the main character. Um, and the story is all from her point of view. And she is a dredger. So she dives down and gets, um, I mean, dredgers can dive into shipwrecks and get treasures from shipwrecks um she gets pyre right? yeah pyre which i think is just like a trick like a Some something kind of they stone? trade yeah that they trade you can get gems like you can get anything down there right um and then saint is her father he's the one that left her on the island called javal i call it javal i don't okay. know if that's right um, four years before the book starts isolde is her mother and she died when fable's father's ship the lark crashed in a storm Zola, <laughs> I just put, he's a bad guy. Um, he is out for the crew of the Marigold, and he's out for Fable. Yeah, we don't really know what his intentions are, other than he's just a, a bad guy. Right. And he's Even, the one, he's the reason that um, Willa, a character we'll talk about, has a scar on her face. Right. And even 
saint, which is supposed to be one of like the most powerful traitors, doesn't like Zola. So yeah, so if, something's going on. If right. Everybody hates this person. Um, and then there's Clove. He was Saint's right hand man and a father figure to Fable. He was the one that, you know, like carried her around on his shoulder. Yeah, and, and got stuff. her got her fruits at the at the markets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, West. He is the helmsman of the Marigold. And the helmsman is like the captain. Yeah. Yeah. And then Willa is West's sister. Um, and the Marigold's bosun. Bosun. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I only know I that because sure... of Bravo. Okay. Below deck. <laughs> okay. Because I wrote down like what all these things do. So yes. the bosun is in charge of the sails of the ship. Um, she, they said that the bosun a lot of times has to be a woman or a mm -hmm. small person because they can go up in the sails and all the rigging and whatever. Yeah. The fastest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's, how do you say his name? Oster? Um, Oster. Okay. Yeah. Oster. He is dating Pash. Yeah, Pash. And Oster is the ship's striker. So the striker is in charge of the inventory of the ship and the nets. Yes. And then Pash is dating Oster and is the ship's navigator. Uh, Hamish is the coin master. And then I put this in there because I totally forgot Holland, which is she's only brought up a couple oh, times. Yeah. But she is the head of the Bastion Empire and she rules the gem trade, which yeah. we don't hear a lot about. No, but I feel like Bastion. it's going to be coming. Yes. It yeah. has to be coming because she's like everyone's like talks about her. And right. Because the, the gem Empire. trade is a big deal, but it's it's all like centered with her. So yeah. anyone else that tries to start trading in gems is automatically like red flag. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Marigold, which is West's ship, and the Lark, which is Saint's ship that sunk. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go. Little, little, hopefully short, quote unquote, summary. <laughs> yeah, we always say short. We always we say short. For so long. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So All right. Beginning of the book. Yeah. The beginning where introduced to Fable, and she is catching a ride with Koi, who has, is that how you say it? Koi? I think so. Yeah. Okay. That's how who, I said it. Yeah. Who owns a ship, which is good on the island of uh, Javal, Javal um, for dredgers to pay him to take them out to dredge and then come back. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we meet her, and she's not trusting. She's telling us all the rules and how, um, how basically she's stayed alive through dredging. Yeah. Um, and we kind of just kind of get a sense of what life is like in Javal, which is very harsh, um, very brutal. And we also get to see her first, like, going down and swimming and how much she enjoys when it. she's, like, barely survived. Like, she has this tree that she she's found, like, a little knot in the tree where she could keep all of her most precious thing. Yes. Which is, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. She doesn't even have shoes. No. And she tells like how much like she's gotten stolen from her and how she like, you know, she's broken her leg and she's barely survived and mm -hmm. she had to eat like kelp and seaweed and stuff like that. And it's just like definitely like a very dreary opening to her life. Yes. So then, um, she she kind of tells us her plan, and her plan is to save it up, save up enough money to get off Javal and go find her father Saint um, and join his crew. Right, because she's got to save enough money to pay someone to take her off yeah, of the island. Exactly, because when her father left her, that's what he said was um, he, she needs to find her own way off. Yeah, the survive and find your and come come for me, and I'll give you what you deserve or yeah. whatever. Yeah, so that's kind of like the beginning of it so it's pretty dark pretty dreary but there's a little bit of hope because she's like i can do this i can save it up, up enough money she's, she's very, getting close to that yeah. that amount that she's um she's decided she needs to get off yeah and she's very careful she keeps her money like hidden and but she starts and then but um koi mentions and a lot of other people will notice that she's been like bringing more pie pyre mm -hmm. back and like people are definitely like seeing that she's good at dredging and but that's kind of puts a target on her back yeah and koi kind of like mentions it but she's really good at lying so she's just like i don't know what you're talking about like i just got lucky or mm -hmm. whatever and so yeah that's kind of like the beginning yeah of it. um so then she 
Koi takes her out again and she's got, so she's got a couple different places where she, she's got like hiding spots where she keeps things. And one of them is her tree. And then another one is under the water and it's in like a coral reef. And so she goes down to try and get that. And Koi follows her because he knows that she's hiding something. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, this is where everything starts coming to a head. She's like, well, I can't save up enough money to leave. I just got to leave now because she knocks Koi out. Um, and this is when she runs to West. And West is a trader that she's been trading her pyre with for... Two years, yeah. Right. For a long time, he keeps coming back and she keeps trading with and him. And he's the only one that will trade with her and he actually gives her a good deal. And yeah. so she's like, her gut just tells her that like when Koi is chasing her and other people are going to know and, and like hurt her, that she's like, I know that I can barter with him. Like, I know I can do it. So she goes and she offers him coin and he takes it. Yeah, and she gets on the Marigold. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> right, barely. She gets on the Marigold, and they set out. Um, their plan is to go to Dern and then Saros. So these are other islands. Um, they talk about a lot of different areas, and I think maybe in the finished copy, there's probably a map. I'm hoping so. Which would be really great, because mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out in my head how all this works, because, like, Javal is in the middle and, like, if you go one way, you can go to Saros and Dern. But yeah. if you go the other way, you go to the... Hmm, I wrote it down somewhere. Nameless Sea? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. Unnamed Sea. That's unnamed Sea. The unnamed saying, Sea. Yeah. And the Unnamed Sea is, like, where all of the very rich people are. Yes. <laughs> um. So, anyway, so they go and they make a stop in Dern. And West tells Fable she's not allowed to leave the ship. And of course, Fable's like, well, that, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I have to make money somehow. I have to go trade. Yeah, with and people. also, like, I'm not your property, and you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do to survive. Right. So she goes, and as she's walking around town, she happens a across um, West and Willa having mm -hmm. an argument. Yes. And she realizes that Willa had this really beautiful knife. Yes. Of some kind. And it had like a really intricate handle with jewels and stuff. And she's traded it at a, what's basically a pawn shop. They call it a uh, gambit. Yeah. Um, and so West convinces Fable to go in and get her blade back. Yes. Yeah. Cause, um, it meant something to Willa. And that's when we realized that there's something going, there's some kind of like, um, deeper, um, like a really, relationship, some kind of relationship yeah. to them than just crewmates. Um, and so she goes in and she uses, she actually had like swiped um, a bracelet off of someone and she uses that as well to um, get her, to get the dagger back. And um, yeah, we see that like Fable, we see time and time again, like with Koi, like cause she knocked Koi out, but saved his life. Mm -hmm. And see then like she, she's, she pushes, her, puts herself out for people when she doesn't have to. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, she gets the she gets the dagger back, and I can't remember why Willa traded it. I think she just needed the money, didn't she? I think so. I don't think it says. I think that she was just like she needed something. I don't think it really tells us. It's just like she's like I was in a pinch, and he's like that's why you come to me, and she's like I don't want to come to you. But I think, in my opinion, I think she's saving up money to not yes. do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think it says that, and maybe we'll like find that out later. But that was my hunch, right? Because we do find out later in the book she tells Fable that that's her plan is yeah. to not be on the marigold anymore. Yeah, she doesn't enjoy it. It's not her like dream. Right. Um, so then after the pawn shop and stuff, you know, this is kind of where Wes starts showing that he's trusting Fable a yeah. little bit more. Because he gives her a coat, he gives her boots, um, because she doesn't have shoes. Yeah. Um, but so then they go to Saros, and this is where Fable was headed all along. This is where her father is. She's going to meet up with him. Yes. Show him that she's still alive and she survived on Javal. And she meets up with him and he basically says, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. She's, <laughs> he says, no, I promised you your inheritance, not a place on my ship. And your inheritance is the lark that's at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> right. So, bye, I guess. Yeah, like, exactly. So, uh, she goes off and gets drunk. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's kind of when Willa starts trusting her more, too. Um, Willa takes her to meet her mother, not really on purpose, but just because they happen to be in the same area. And she's yeah. like, just come with me. Well, and they're looking for West. And yes. so it's like, she's like, can I trust you? And she's like, yes. Like, 
you know, they're all, they're oh, both of their goals was to find Wes. So right. like she had in that moment, they made, she made a decision. And so, and that's when she starts trusting her more. So she meets, she meets Willa and Wes mom and she finds out that Willa and Wes are brother and sister. Yes. Um, and then they, they find West and he is all beaten up. Mm-hmm. He's under like a pile of garbage. Yeah. Isn't he? I like, think so. Yeah. Um, but they find him and they know immediately like, so he's not doing well, which means their ship is probably not exactly. doing well either. Yeah. And they find their ship with the sails all ripped apart, and the two men that they had hired to guard the ship are dead. Yes. And so they realize that, like, Zola attack just means, like, everything's going wrong because Willa, or, um, not Willa, uh, Fable's dad cast her off, and she's not a part of their crew, but she, like, doesn't know what else to do. And mm-hmm. that's when Willa kind of hints that, like, Fable should try to be a part of their crew. That, right. Like, they need a dredger. She, right. They and... don't have a dredger. She's a really good dredger. She's, like, shown her worth because on their way to... It was on their way to Dern or Saros. I'm not sure which. But on that, that journey, um, she showed her worth. Yeah. Like, they they threw a copper into the sea and was like, go get it. She did. She went and got it. Exactly. And she definitely, like, puts in her own weight. Doesn't want anyone to, like, owe her anything. Isn't trying to, like, slack on anything. And I think she also, like has shown that she's, like, trustworthy mm-hmm. with all of, like, the little small things that she has done. Um, right. And she's just a good person. Um, and they and she was, um, one rule of her father's was, like, to never say that she was his daughter. And she breaks that rule for just for the crew. And they all have broken that rule. Like, they broke the rule about um, West and Willa being brother and sister. Mm-hmm. They ro- broke the rule about... Um, Paj and Oster. Yeah, Paj and Oster dating. Like, so it's just, like... She's slowly becoming, like, a part of, like, their crew, but a part of their, like, family, mm-hmm. which she's been wanting. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, she's part of the crew. Um, and now, this is when she tells them, like, she's officially part of the crew. So, she's like, okay, well, you, you don't have any sales. I have a way to get your sales back. Yes. And she um, also wants to get... She also wants... If she's a part of the crew, she wants to help West get out from under her father. Because that's who got West his boat. Right. That's who owns the Marigold. And he tells her that it could be 16 years before he pays off Saint. Yeah. But that's a long time. That's such a long time. So she tells them about the lark and yes. about how her father has left her left her the lark as her inheritance, which she even mentions. Like they're not even sure once they set out for the lark if anyone else has found it and exactly. raided it already. Yeah, but so the lark um, shipwrecked in this area that like there's a lot of coral, coral reef, reef, yeah, and it's really hard to navigate. But um, when her dad when her dad dropped her on Javal, he carved. In her arm, the map to get to the lark. Yeah. To get through the coral. Isn't, that's so insane that, like, that that he did that and then left her there. And it's just, oh. And didn't tell her. There's so many twists with that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just can't imagine being, like, I think she was probably 12, right? Yeah. she's, like, 16 now. Mm-hmm. 12. And having your dad just be like, do you trust me? Yes. And then just, like, <laughs> click it. And then just leaving me. you. And just being like, yeah. bye. <laughs> um... And, uh, so they quest, they go off to, for the lark and they, she helps them with the map on her arm, maneuver mm-hmm. to it. And oh, that was so stressful. That was very stressful. I was like sitting there like, oh my God, are they going to get through? I know. And then like, <laughs> is it going to be there? Right. Uh, and then, uh, both her and West go dredging mm-hmm. and that's when you find out West was a dredger. Yeah. Which is so dredged. cool. I really liked that. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I would have never, like, guessed that. No. Yeah, so they go dredging, and one of West thing, one of his, pro- or not promises, but things he makes Fable promise when she joins the crew is that that's all she is. She's part of the crew. Yes. There is no other relationship that's going to happen. But when they go down dredging in the Lark... They have a moment. And he shows us true feelings. And she's been, like, hiding her feelings, too. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the re- like he came and bought all of... Um, every time she, like, he bartered, and, like, it bartered with her. Yeah. Um, and, like, he saved her life. Like, if he wasn't there to, like, barter with her to get coin, like, she wouldn't have been able to eat. She wouldn't have been able to survive. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't have been taken seriously. And I think she would have, like, eventually just, like, got killed yeah and so like there's so much behind that and she obviously like cares about him Mm -hmm. and knew that she could go to him when she was escaping so yeah it all kind of comes to like a little hit and she just wants to like 
she doesn't know how to feel about it, so she just wants to keep it down there. Because she says, like, the sea is, like, where she feels, yes. like, herself, and she just wants to keep that secret down there. So, yeah, they find all the treasures on the lark. They bring them up. They go back to Saros, yep. right? They go back to Saros, and they're, like, really celebrating because they finally have money yeah they went and hit it on their island um that they hit ha, have been like staring storing all their extra loot and like they're starting to plan like okay we're gonna like we're gonna sell all this stuff in this many increments and we're gonna like sell it all and then we're gonna buy the marigold and we're gonna be able to be free mm -hmm. and so you feel like okay this is great and like i <laughs> i didn't see it coming but you so did? Like, well I, I thought something was gonna happen yeah. but i thought that maybe it would end and then like the next chapter would be like them like going and selling off the stuff yeah well okay so i knew that everything was too good like they were celebrating they had bought like they bought not like good food they bought yes. nice china to eat it off of and i was like it's too happy there's only like 10 percent of the book left something's gonna happen yeah. to lead into book two like the happiness cannot last <laughs> so fable goes and like meets up with her dad mm-hmm and that was kind of, like, a different exchange that I, that I thought was going to happen. Yeah, her dad actually cried. Yeah, and, like, opened up, and she was like, you always said I wasn't made, for, like, I wasn't, like, made for, like, to, I wasn't good enough for this, or I was never good, I was not fit for this world. And he's like, yeah, you're better than this. Like, mm -hmm. you're better than this, so your mom was better. And, like, I wasn't sure if it was foreshadowing his, like, death. That's why I was, like, a little confused, because she turned around and said, I'll never see him again. Yeah. So I was like, oh, does that mean that, like... Once she chooses West Side, she won't be able to go That's back. That's what I thought. Okay. Because once they, once she pays off Saint, then West is out from underneath him, and they're like enemies because they're rival traitors. Yeah. And so like West is like, well, should I, should I just stay under him so that like there's no bad blood or whatever? Um, but they finally, I think she finally gets like the closure that she's looking for. But it's also like scary because it's like, okay. What's going to happen next mm -hmm. with them? And then... Yeah, then she gets captured. Yeah, Zola is waiting out... Zola was waiting outside for him. He just, her. like, pops out of the shadows, and it's not just him. It's, like, four of his crew members. And he's known who she was this entire time because she looks so much like her mother, and her mother apparently, like, worked for him, which is... She used to dredge for Which Zola. is, like, scary because yes. his poor, her poor mom probably went through a lot of crap if he's that mean. Right. So then, yeah, she, like is dreaming about her dad and being on the lark and wakes up and she's not, she knows it's not a dream. And she's tied to the mast, the mast of the Luna, which the I Luna. really hate. The, his ship is called the Luna, right? Because it's the moon. Mm -hmm. How dare he? So that? yeah, she <laughs> opens her eyes and realizes she's on the loon and is looking for Zola, but isn't seeing him, but she sees someone else. Freaking Clove. Clove, who which... was her dad's boss or dad's like right hand man yeah. a father figure to her close with her mom and she sees him on this enemy and when she boat. talked to her dad he said that clove is gone and so she assumed that meant he was dead yeah nope he so it's like okay her. so he must be the reason that the lark you know, there must be a reason that he's on that ship mm -hmm. and he's like working on it right so is he working with zola the whole time exactly like that's all these questions and like <gasps> why didn't her dad do anything about it mm -hmm. like or that's... warn her yeah because he did warn her about zola instead of if you ever if zola's ever like comes near you you run straight to me yeah <sighs> and so there's so many questions at the end that lead to namesakes so that's so interesting mm -hmm. I'm super excited. I know. I, so I really love that. Okay. It's Adrian Young, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. For some reason, I couldn't think of her last name. I love that Adrian Young's books are fantasy, but there's not like a set magic system. Cause usually fantasy comes with a set magic system or something. Yeah. And there's really not like the only magic in this book is the, uh, gem. What is it called? Gem sage. She's a gem sage. Oh, yeah. So she gem can, like, shades. hear right the gems. Yeah, she feels them. They, like, vibrate. Yeah. She can, like, it's kind of like a, yeah, they do all have different vibrations, and she can feel if they're good or, you know, where they're at. Right. So, but that's the only, like, magic. Yeah. Which yeah. I love, because the whole time I was like, oh, my God, is her mom, like, a siren or a mermaid? Is that why she can hold her breath? But I don't, I just don't think that that's what, I mean, maybe, I guess we'll see in namesake, but... I just don't think that's what Adrienne Young does with her fantasy. No, the magic is like, like it's very uh, subtle. Yeah, subtle is why mm -hmm. I want to say it's subtle and it's believable. Like I can, I can believe that someone could maybe do that. You know, mm -hmm. so I really like that too. Okay, so we have uh, our questions. So we can just start with uh, 
Question one, favorite character. You go first. And okay. I'll go first. Ah, I'm not on the right page. <laughs> Weird. Sorry, my life. Um, so my favorite character is Fable, and then if I have to pick a non-main character, it's Willa. Me too. Really? Yes. <laughs> I love oh, Willa. No, I do too. She's so tough, but she's also so caring. You can just tell because she's the first one that's really ready to accept Fable. Well, and she's the first one who's like talking to her, and the first one who opens up to her. Like mm-hmm. they both like have late night talk, like talks, yeah. and like some things are like they open up just a little bit every single time. Mm-hmm. And I think like, and she's the one who. Who's like fight for her to be on the crew, like be on the crew. Like right. she's the one who like extends her arm. So I really like Well, her. and she also like um she's the one well, Wes told her to, but she didn't have to. She followed Fable through Saros when she was going to talk to her father. Yeah. And she followed her and got her room when Fable got drunk. Yeah. <laughs> like, so she didn't like yeah, she was like ordered to, but she didn't have to. Right. She didn't have to do yeah. that. But yeah, I I love her. Me too. Okay, question two, least favorite character? Zola. I put Zola. And then I put Clove because of the ending. Because I don't trust him at all now. And I feel like he's the reason everything happened. And I'm mad at him. Well, I said Zola because I was like, first of all, he's just a jerk. But also, he hurt Willa. Yeah, he's the one who, like, did that to Willa. And it's just like... Because he must have... um, He, like, almost branded her. Because he got, like, the blade hot and then just seared her skin with it. Yeah. So she just got, like, a blade. Well, it's like, why? Why did he do that? You know what I mean? They don't tell you. So I'm hoping that they tell us why. Right. All right, um, hypothesis on the title and how it relates to the book. Well, I was like, it's her name, her story, her legacy. So that's why I wrote. Yeah, I, I just put main character's name. Main dot, character's dot, dot. name, which I like because when you when you think fable, you think like of a story. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know that was her name. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Four, uh, what do you think of the book's cover? How well does it convey what the book is about? If the book had been published with a different cover, would, which one would you like best? I don't... Does it have another cover? Oh, I, I didn't... Lore open up twice. Oh, I didn't take that. I took... I guess I don't... You wrote this question. Um, <laughs> I did? Yeah. I, I don't think I wrote I think that we found this question. I was going to say, because we got... Um, we so had, I took it as, like, if it had a different cover, which one would you I like? thought it was if it was published under a different... Because remember when uh, we did um, Cinderella Isn't Dead? That one had, like, two the covers. Cover okay, was yeah, really, really, really cool. I didn't know that. I took it as if it had a different cover, which one would you like best? Um, oh, it does! <gasps> It has a couple different other covers. Ooh, I like that one. This that one's cool. I guess I'm, I'm not sure. This is published by Titan Books, and it's um, it's more of a cartoon person. Yes. Uh, the background's all blue, and then it's like a, the girl's like facing up yeah. instead of straight at you. She's facing up with her hair kind of like oh, curling upwards. Yeah. And then let's see this other one. Um, it's similar to the U.S. one because the U.S. one is a uh, a girl with like freckles and um, red hair close up. Yes, and you can see in her eye a reflection of a ship. Yes, and then this one that's published. It's like the top of her top of her eye, like you can see her eyes, and then her forehead and her like um, hair. Yeah, it doesn't say who this one's published by, but I wonder how that works. I don't know how that works. Well, I know, um, like usually the the. UK publisher is different from the US publisher, so, so maybe there's they three other covers. Yeah, maybe there's three publishers. Well, and then sometimes, you know, once it gets sold in other countries, yeah. then they get to put their own cover. Okay, so which cover? Wait, what were the questions? I asked the question, I don't remember. <laughs> um, what do you think of what do you think of the book's cover that we have and how does it convey the book is about? I first of all I love the cover. Yeah, I, I like love the cover. I like this cover compared yes. to the others. I like the other covers. This is the first time where I'm like I like all of them, mm-hmm. but I like this one the best. I love it. Um, the only thing at first I wanted to say, like, it doesn't, I don't think it conveys necessarily what the book's about until you really look at it and then you see the hidden, like, ship in her eye. Yeah, and that's what I kind of like about it. Yeah, I was like, no, oh, I love that. Like, I love covers that do that because there's been a couple other covers that, you know, we've seen before where you think it's one thing, um, but then it's also got another. Like, yeah. that one that you read... And it's, it looks like it's a planet, I think, on the cover, but it's also, like, a silhouette of a girl's face. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what it is. I can't think of it. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I really like this cover, and I definitely think if you look closer, it conveys what the story's about. And I mm-hmm. like this cover the best. What about you? Yeah, this is yeah. my favorite, for sure. And I love that namesake matches up with it, <gasps> so yes. you put the books next to each other, it's her full face. Yeah, so on... <laughs> This last episode on the tea chats, I put them side by side oh, on the screen because yeah. I was like, because I put them next to each other. I was like, wait a second. I like put it together. I was like, that is so cool. 
All right, number five, favorite part of the book. Okay, so I put anytime Fable was diving and dredging was my favorite part. Oh, really? Because she just talked about how beautiful it was and mm -hmm. how at peace she was and, like, just described, like, the feeling of it. And I'm not a swimmer by any means, but I do remember, like, when I was younger, like, enjoying, like, being underwater and, like, the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I really like those parts. Yeah. What are, what are your favorite So my, my favorite part was the morning after her father's rejection, she's hung over over and <laughs> Willa has like invites her to sit with them at breakfast. She's sitting with, and you can just tell at that moment, the, uh, the whole crew accepts her as part of their crew. It's not been official yet, but she's part of them. Yeah. Cause then, you know, they start talking about ship business and then they're going to get up and go whatever they're going to do. And they like wait for her to follow them. Yeah. They're like, come on. And I think it also show, showed them that like, she's not perfect and she's like a human. And, <laughs> and I just, I love it. Cause I love books about found family. Yeah. That's and cute. that's what, that that moment was like the found family moment. Like she oh. was officially part of the family. Yeah. yeah I oh, that's it. so cute. Okay. Um, least favorite part. I said the end. What did I say? That is honestly. I was so mad because I knew it was coming. Like I said, I, I could see it coming because I was like, they're too happy. They're too happy. And there's a second yeah. book. So they're yeah. too happy. Yeah, I knew that. Um, yeah. So yeah, the end was not my favorite part. <laughs> um, I put um, when she leaves the Marigold for the first time and then her father um, rejects her because at that point I felt like she like felt like at first, like, Marigolds didn't want her. And so she felt, like, rejected from them. And then she got second rejected from her father. So I felt like yes. that was her, like, lowest point of, like, so alone. No one wants her. And I was, like, I was really sad when that happened. I'm glad that, like, what happened next was mm -hmm. good. But, like, I was, like, no, she tried so hard. And now she's still just alone on a different place. Right. Yeah. At a different place. And, again, like, now she has no coin again. And, like, what is she going to do? <laughs> she's going to go drink. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Uh, describe it. Describe this book in three words. Yes. And I added, like, to someone who wants to know what this book is about. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I thought, like, maybe that makes help people if they're answering this question. Right. So I put dangerous, adventurous, and enthralling. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so I only put two, so I just quickly wrote another one, and it's two words. It's not one. That's fine. Um, but I said pirate, <gasps> adventure, yes. daddy issues. <laughs> Hyphen, daddy issues. Because <laughs> I really wanted to talk about that, how, you know, when her, all she wants is her dad's approval, and he will not give it to her. And that's what helped her survive the yeah. last four years was that, like, goal of, like, getting her, as soon, if she can do this, her dad will accept her. And yes. then she gets there, and he's like, no. Uh -huh. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I did all this. Like, I proved myself. And he's like, no, I only promised you this. Right, and I'm just get like, out. <sighs> yeah. Daddy issues. Daddy man. issues. That's good. See, I I want to do more like like explaining like if someone's trying to read it like three. Yeah, like, yeah. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, which job? <laughs> you skipped you... one. I did. I'm so you sorry. Two. <gasps> I d I did this last time. I'm so sorry, okay. guys. Number eight is favorite quote. <laughs> well, let's, how did I? How did I? Wait, did we miss any before this? No. Okay, good. <sighs> okay, favorite quote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my favorite quote. I and have to pull mine up. It's actually kind of sad, so I'm sorry. What is but wrong says, with you? No, I'm just kidding. And no matter where I went, I'd never get home because home was a ship that was at the bottom of the sea where my mother's bones lay sleeping in the deep. <gasps> that was really good. That's really good. Oh, stop Ugh. it. I hate you. Okay, so I had two. An emo quote. That is such an emo quote. You're welcome. And of course, I picked like the sweet ones. <laughs> never would I do that. So I picked. One for Willow, Willa, Willa, Willa to show how crazy, how fierce oh. she is. I'm not saying I don't want you to love him. I'm only saying that if you get him killed, I don't know if I'll be able to keep myself from cutting your throat. I love that. <laughs> love that. Okay. And then I thought, and then I pick like, of course I pick like the two sweet ones. So this one's from uh, West to Fable. I understand my, I underestimated my ability to be on this ship without, without you and not with okay i underestimated my ability to be on this ship with you and not touch you and then i picked one from willa's dad and it was you were you were made for a far better world than this one fable oh so i picked like the sweet ones i'm so sorry and then i picked one from fable and it said it was love that broke us all oh yeah it's towards the end when she's captured and she says that because she's like okay the reason we're all here is because of love like in this situation, which just, oh, it just, yes. Okay. Let me look. Cause I highlighted other stuff too. You did? Oh, yeah. Read my them. favorite one. Yeah. See, I was like, there's too many. So I'm just going to like 
highlight them in a certain color. Oh, I like this one too. Okay. Never under any circumstances reveal who or what matters to you. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, I feel like a lot of times I'm like that in real life too. You oh know? yeah, like, definitely. Don't, don't tell people what matters to you because well, they're going to use it against, against you. you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Same. No one. <laughs> um, that says a lot about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. And then this last one too. Okay. When I was alone on Javal, I'd thought many times that love was no more than folklore and that my mother had only been able to give it flesh and bone because she wasn't like the rest of us. She was mythic, otherworldly. Isolde seemed connected to, to the sea in a way that no one else was as if she belonged beneath the surface of it instead of up here with us. Oh, I also want to hear more about her mother. Oh my God, yes. is old. Is old. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to know more. She sounds so fascinating and I want to know mm -hmm. about her past mm -hmm. and like, oh, it just sounds so good. Yes. Um, okay. So you're next. Cause I will skip uh, through these. <laughs> <laughs> what feelings did this book invoke? Okay. I put sorrow and the thirst for adventure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I said sense of adventure. Yeah. <laughs> See, I couldn't I, think of how to say that. I really love those kind of books. That, yes. You know, it's, it's just constant adventure. Like it's, it makes you like, want to like go out and do that. <laughs> right. That's why I like the Hobbit so much. Cause it's just a giant adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Which job would you want on the ship? Okay. Wait, do you go first or do I go first? You go first. Okay. So I said, oh my God, I just... would like to be able to be a dredger because I think it sounds really fun. But in reality, <laughs> I would be the coin master. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you'd be the coin master. <laughs> what about you? Okay. So I was like in between, because um, I was like, what would I do? I don't know. Um, I thought dredger, I put dredger because I love looking for items like rocks, four leaf clovers, and like little treasures. Yeah. I love like, going hiking. Um, in the summer and like my mom and I used to do that. Like we'd sit out on our front porch and like look for four leaf clovers or like go down to like the lake bank and like look for cool rocks. Yeah. Find so I, treasures. yeah. So I thought I'd be a dredger. Cause I was like, I don't know if I would be good at any of them. I know. <laughs> like a lot of them sound very dangerous and yes. like hard. <laughs> yes. So that is what I put. <laughs> okay. Um, thoughts on the ending. Um, as we said, I mean, you saw it coming. I saw something coming. I guess I knew something was going to come. I didn't think the clove thing would happen. I, yeah, that no. blew me out of the water. I kept waiting for her mom to be alive. Cause I'm just like, I really want her mom to be alive. Yes. Like I'm Even still though, hoping. I feel like we know that she's not because her dad went back and got her mom's necklace and she was always wearing it. But what if she took it off? Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep hoping well, until the end I of the too, duology. Like, <laughs> it's a very dark part of my brain when oh, they went we down to the <laughs> lark. I was like, are they going to see her bones? Mm -hmm. But then the sea life would have eaten it by then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, and I also wrote, um, I am so glad we all only have less than a month until it makes Oh my sake. God, so me too. So we can read it. Yes. Um, I guess I said, like, I thought, like, it's obviously open for a second book. Yes. Um, but I just hate that she was captured by Zola. Like, I hate, oh, I hate him. I hate it because it's going to, like, put everybody in such a, like, she, unfortunately, like, sh she matters to a, fortunately, but, like, also, unfortunately, she matters to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, I feel like, are going to get hurt. Well, and... To the whole, like, I thought the ending was going to be someone important dies because authors love to kill off characters. <laughs> and I knew that they were too happy for the end of a book because there was a second book already. Yeah. So, like, I thought someone was going to die. So, I, I guess at least that didn't happen. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Silver lining. <laughs> if you could hear this same story from another person's point of view, who would you choose? Um, I said... Either Saint or Willa. Like, I would like to hear this story from Willa's point of view, but I want to hear the prequel yes. from Saint or Isolde's point of view. Yes. So I put Willa. Um, I want to know more about her, about how they got mm -hmm. there, and, like, what's going on, like, behind the scenes with, like, everything that we yeah. don't know, like, when they were gone or all that stuff. And I agree. Like, I want to hear before, like, mm -hmm. the prequel. I really hope that she maybe does, like, a little point five. Yes. Zero point five. Me too. Okay, um, we're on 13. Did this book seem realistic to you? I say so, honestly. Like, even with the, like, the the small bit of magic, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, the, uh, who likes the birds? Is it um, Oster? Yeah, it's Oster, yep. I think. I'm pretty sure it's Oster. Oster or 
Taj. I don't know. Okay, I can't remember. But yeah, um, I think that like the magic is believable. And I think this is, I think it's pretty believable. What about you? Yeah, I, I mean, it is. And I think that was the hardest part for me is that there's so much ship talk. And I was like, I don't know what most of this stuff is. Nope. I kept like, highlighting it and being like, Okay, that I mean, you're giving me the answer, but I still am like, I don't know what this is. Right. So I feel like if you are really familiar with ships and how they work and sailing, and then you'll love it because yeah. you will understand all of it. Yeah. But. And I also wrote, um, especially like describing the ocean and like being on the ocean and the fighting parts made it feel realistic to me. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, because it was like, like it was, gr- it was a little gruesome, like bloody. And it's like, okay, well, you know, that kind of makes it more realistic. A yeah. Little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. It's oh, it's me? Okay. <laughs> Would you read another book by this author? Or have you read, I guess? Yes. You have? Um, I read Sky of the Deep. I thought you did. I and wasn't sure. I didn't realize until today when I was looking, when I was kind of like doing researches, I didn't realize that um, her other book, what's her other book? Because Sky in the Deep, the girl, the sea the girl gave back is Sky in the Deep number two. Yeah. I did not. I don't know why I didn't realize that, but I've only read Sky in the Deep. And then the sea the girl gave back, the girl the sea gave back. <laughs> is 10 years after oh, Sky in the Deep. Oh, interesting. So I don't remember Sky in the Deep ending where there needs to be a sequel right after. So maybe that's why I guess I didn't realize it. Yeah. There was a sequel. They looked familiar. I just honestly didn't put two and two together that she wrote those. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I need to read these. The Sky in the Deep was really good. It's like a Viking oh, book. I remember and you it's, talking about and it. And again, it's like. one where like there's fantasy, but there's not really yeah. fantasy. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't remember who did the last one. Uh, I think it's my turn. Okay. Okay, 15. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. We're not saying numbers. Whatever. <laughs> Books similar to this book that you would recommend. So I found two in on my bookshelves, and one was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace, and the other is Daughter of a Pirate King by Tricia Levenseller. Yeah. And I think so, you read that one, right? Yeah, so I read Daughter of the Pirate King. It's a duology. The second one is uh, Daughter of the Siren Queen. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a really good it's a really good duology, um, which I just think it's funny. Both of these are like pirate books and they're both duologies, but yes. no, it's a, it's a really good read alike. So if you like the adventure, you like the pirate stuff, you like the daddy issues, <laughs> like for real. It's, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, another one is black hearts by Nicole Casterman. Um, it's another duology. It's heavier on the romance, but it's, um, it's the origin story of Blackbeard the pirate. Oh, cool. So it's about, you know, like why he is the way he is. Um, oh, and it's really good. Yeah. Um, I picked all the stars and teeth because, um, it has pirates in it. It has romance. It has mermaids. It has mermaids. So, and I, the cover is so cool. Mm-hmm. So that's, and I that's, that one. I think that's a duology. It also. is. Yes. Cause it's, um, the other one is called, it's pink. I remember the cover. Yep. Um, all the tides of fate. Yeah. So yeah. And that came out this year. Yeah. Or yes. coming out this year. Came out in 2021. Do, do, do. You're asking questions. Sorry. Just kidding. Um, February. Yeah, February 2nd. So we probably mentioned it. Yeah, we, we probably talked it. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Too many books. Um, oh, my goodness. Final thoughts? Um, so, basically, I just want to know more about her mom. Yes. Like, I need, I need that prequel told from Isolde's point of view about how she worked for Zola, how she met Saint, and like their time together and and also what happened to yeah, her yeah yeah because that's like she seemed like for an amazing dredger and amazing swimmer like how could she drown on a ship well that's why i kept thinking that she was a siren oh god a siren or a mermaid or something because she can hold her breath and so can fable and she taught fable how to like do that thing where you like yeah. were you trying to yes. do it while I was she's like describing breathing it? breathing while she's breathing. Because yeah. she's talking about, like, and she can be underwater for so long. So I'm like, does she have some kind of... And she could. We don't know. Maybe right. that's part of, like, um, what's it called when she can feel the stones? Oh, the uh, gem sage. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's part of being a gem, sh- gem sage. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't say that out loud. <laughs> um, so I really liked it. I agree. I can't wait. Um, and I found that, um, so Namesake comes out March 16th yes. and you can pre or we put the pre-order links down below. Um, and you can pre-order from Mala Props bookstore. It must be her, the, the author, Adrian Young. It must be her local bookstore. Okay. Cause I was like, why? Yeah, <laughs> it's it in North Carolina. 
Because if you pre-order, you can get signed copies. Yes, you can get signed copies. You can get a um, art print of Namesake. And you could also um, get, and when you pre-order from them, you get a ticket for their live... Um, launch event. Yeah, their virtual launch event. So... Uh, we're going to do that. Yeah, I think that you guys should too. Um, it's through the bookstore. So I'm sure the bookstore employees, but also Adrian Young is going to be part of it. I just think that'll be really exciting. Yeah. And along with like ordering namesake, it will be signed. You can get Fable signed or any other other books signed, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Yeah. Um, I just think it's really good to support authors. Heck yeah. Especially and small uh, independent bookstores. Yes. And um, a lot of authors like really... Um, appreciate when people when people pre-order because it shows yes. like how popular the book is. Right, so it shows the it shows the publisher that people are interested in that work, and that'll help the author get more deal more yes. book deals. Yes. Um, and a reminder, we won't be doing a deep dive into Namesake, but if people are interested, we can do a special Patreon discussion of Namesake, oh. a special deep dive. But either way, go pre-order like we did and let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Um, and let us know too, if you, if you want us to talk about Namesake, like I said, we can do a Patreon episode. I think it would be really fun because if you, if you read Fable, you're going to want to read Namesake. Exactly. So. Um, and we will be doing, uh, a little like chat over on Patreon about the questions we answered and how everyone else liked it um so go check out over there you can become a book witch with everybody else yeah did we want to announce our next book oh yeah we probably should <laughs> sorry i didn't think about it till right you are now. the keeper of that list because you wrote it <laughs> okay so in march at the end of march we'll be discussing i killed zoe spanos i am so excited i i by bought an author i don't know. Who oh is. gosh, I didn't write it down either. But um, it's out now, so you can go and buy it. And it the cover's so cool, and I cannot wait to read it. It is by Kit Frick. Um, it's a YA mystery thriller. So we kind of decided we're you know we're gonna mix it up a little bit. Yeah. So you don't get too tired of like fantasy or thriller or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So. Time, really to, cool. time to get that book from your library. Yes. Or Go get it from your library. Um, you can request books at your library if you don't want to buy it. There's also usually Kindle books are cheaper. Audio um, books. Audio books. Um, yeah. So go get it. And so we can do that deep dive next yeah, month. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I think that's it, though. Yeah. We better get going. Got more tea to drink and books to read. All of our social medias are down below, as always, as well as all the links we talked about. Go pre-order. Um, namesake by Adrian Young. It's going to be so good. I cannot wait to I'm have so it. I'm so excited. <laughs> and you guys should let us know if you go, if you're going to be at that virtual event too, because we'll yeah. all be there together. Yeah. Um, make sure to rate and review the podcast. Yes, please. And subscribe. Yes. Uh, it really helps us get seen. It helps other people find us. Yes. And yeah, rating us really helps. Um, maybe even like uh, subscribing on YouTube where you can watch the video. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you can become a book witch, like I said, on our Patreon, where we do extra stuff. Um, we might be doing more deep dives that are just for Patreon, which yeah. is kind of cool, because then we can have a little more in-depth discussion. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>